So today I have a QEEG of a nice young lady, um, PREK93, and she did 20 sessions, 20 hours. Let's see what she did. She did uh, S. Loretta Z score training, and we were working on obsessive compulsive type uh, symptoms, and we trained in the uh, default mode network a, pr a good bit. We did some phase training and uh, some OCD specific training. So let's see how she did. So I'm going to review her QEEG now. So let's take a look at the first one, see where we started. She had pretty severe symptoms. I mean, debilitating when she started couldn't really go out of the house doing uh, rituals most of the day, counting and sorting. Let's see, here's the initial QEEG. And it's clear we can see this vector towards the uh, left posterior temporal middle parietal. Uh, in the slow frequencies, and yeah, I've seen that certainly, in res certainly around the parietals and the theta is being related to a very severe OCD. The people I see with the OCD back there almost borders on psychosis. Sometimes even schizophrenia can look a little like that as well. Um, but it continues into the mid-range frequencies, anxiety, difficulty concentrating. She's really keyed up. And then we just have a total obscuring in the uh, final row here in the betas. I mean, you know, I think that that's not saying necessarily that her whole brain globally is dysregulated. I think it's just that the area that is dysregulated is blurring out the rest of the sensors because it's uh, so high out of what we would expect to be the norm. And we also have some higher activity in the posterior. And this is more what I would associate with, a lot of people would associate with obsessive compulsive or anxiety is this high frequency activity. So this was her first one. And as I said, we trained uh, default mode. Uh, she did uh, 20 hours of therapy. And this was in the home environment. Uh, let's see what the new one looks like here. This is exciting, huh? So let's get to the final. Let's open that up. And see what we've got. So here is the EEG. Pretty good quality EEG. And we can take a look at the report. Let's see here. Oh, let me take a look at the eyes open too. Sorry, I want to see the eyes open. I just changed my mind. I'm going to just shift gears here for a minute and let's open that eyes open. We do an eyes open and an eyes closed because the brain changes state when the eyes are open and the eyes are closed. And people can have issues in eyes open and not eyes closed and vice versa. So it's pretty straightforward why, why we do that. And I like to train people with both eyes open and eyes closed within the same session because I think that gets the brain in different states. Okay, and this is the new one. Okay, so I'd say that's a pretty good result. We went from this first one here. Let's see here. Where is that first one? Come here. And let me get out the summary page there. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There we are. So let's compare these two together. There is still, I can see, a little bit of a dysregulation in the posterior uh, left temporal. And this certainly is quite a bit more on this first scan on the left here. Really, amplitude asymmetry is there. We have uh, very low power. Actually, the relative power in delta also did come up. And this problem in the back, it looks like somewhere, mm, I'm going to guess, potentially Broadman's area of 40. Uh, but I don't know. 
let's I'll have to look at the Loretta to actually answer that question. I can't just guess on that. But okay, I'll take that. That's pretty good. 20 hours and uh, wow. Oh, we're looking at eyes closed here. So that's not a fair comparison. Let's go back to eyes open. Eyes open one. Um, reports. Eyes open one. Okay, that's a better, better comparison there. Okay, more fair. Apples to apples. Okay, so yeah. Well, this is this is compatible with the degree of relief she has um, experienced. So she, I spoke to her, and she said she's able to actually go out and look forward to going out with her friends. She went out to a show on Saturday and said she hadn't done that in quite a bit of time. So uh, I would say the changes are commensurate with the with the um, experience of the client. And uh, looks great in the high level too. So, so when the eyes open, it's actually pretty good. She had a pretty good result there. Let's see what the eyes closed looks like now that I looked at the eyes open. So, uh, eyes closed one here. Yeah, it's a bit more affected, but you know, for somebody that has an anxiety disorder, potentially like a post-traumatic stress disorder, I find that the eyes closed will often be worse or take a little bit longer to get better because, you know, when you close your eyes, your brain is supposed to downshift into a slower frequency and should should relax. And people who have an anxiety-related disorder, they don't relax very well. And so it's not uncommon to see there to be some degree of worsening. But even here, I can see improvement. So we have improvement in three, four, five, six, not seven and eight. I don't know, maybe nine. Definitely 10. Certainly the third line. To some degree, the fourth line. And the back is still on fire there, but it's certainly it's better on the right. So, so I would say that this is certainly this is this is showing that she had a had an improvement. It's it's saying that uh, there is some change in the QEG, but I don't want to just stop there. I'd like to see her statistical comparison. So it's not just my eye making the decision. I really can see this and get a good idea. So let's look at the um, paired t test. Here we are. Wow. So I would say there is significant change. Oh, that's relative power, absolute power. Yeah, so where we see the change. This is uh, eyes open. So significant change in all these bands, even in that bottom line. So we're, I guess people get confused by this one because uh, Where you see the red on this scan is actually uh, good. So, so where you see red, it's showing that there's a high degree of uh, probability that the uh, QEEG didn't change just due to chance alone. So, if I did this and compared it to itself, all of the circles would be pretty would be completely white, and and seeing a and if I compared two totally different people, all of the circles would be completely red. And so uh, I don't know if that's true with uh, identical twins, but I would assume that uh, it's not. Um, so that's pretty good. That's a pretty good result, and the person actually noticed that it was a nice result. Uh, you know, so yeah, I think that I'm happy with that.